now what we're going to do is we're going to take our little fan, which still has a radius of 2, and we're going to set it on top of a table. And this fan is going to be set so that the closest Steve ever gets to this table is 0.5 feet. We want to now give the new function and a new graph. It's probably easier to look at the graph first. We're still working with radians. And our amplitude is still going to be 2 and negative 2, but let's look at what happens. So Steve's minimum height, well Steve starts at the 3 o'clock position, which is now 0.5 feet, because that's the lowest point, plus an additional 2 feet from the radius. So Steve starts 2.5 feet above the table. When he moves up to the max, he's now 4.5 feet above the table. He's back down at 2.5 feet, and then at 0.5 feet. So at zero radians, Steve is up at 4.5 feet. I'm sorry, at zero radians at the 3 o'clock positions, he at, he's at 2.5. He moves up to 4.5 by pi over 2, then back down to 2.5, down to 0 0.5, 2.5, 4.5, two point five. We now have a baseline that's at two point five. And our amplitude is still the same. We're still two units up and down from that baseline. So we go as low as point five and as high as four point five. But the way we adjust our function then we're still going to plug theta into sine, and that will give us vertical height and radii. We still want to multiply by the amplitude to give us that vertical height in feet. But we now want to take all of those values and add 2.5 feet to them to move them up off that table. So our final equation, we get h, which equals m of theta, equals 2 times sine theta plus 2.5. This number here that we messed with is called the vertical shift. And it is the location of the baseline. And it is the distance of the center. of the circle from the point of reference. Another important characteristic to note, so so far we've talked about vertical shift, which is location of the baseline, or the distance of the center of our circle from our point of reference. And we've talked about amplitude, which is the radius of our circle. It's the distance of our max and min points from that baseline. That's all I want to talk about for part B of the videos. If you're feeling really good about this and want to move on to part C, where we're going to talk about period and horizontal shift, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, just make sure you've got part B down solid. Or even go back to part A and make sure that that makes sense.